All right, hello everyone, and uh, welcome to the Open Pago Pass webinar. Thank you for joining and thank you for making that time to register to be part of this. My name is Wisdom Chap Jumbo, and I'll be moderating this session today. We're excited to have everyone join. Uh, it's an interesting conversation. And of course, uh, if, you're, if you've registered for this webinar to be here, it means uh, the open uh, the open source space, I mean, and how it drives energy access is one you're really interested in, and we're really happy to have you on. This webinar um, offers an opportunity for attendees, uh, of course, both technical and not technical, uh, to be able to understand or delve into the concept and foundation of Open Pay Go Pass. And as you know, which has been shared across um, all platform where you registered is it's going to explore, of course, what this is about, uh, the functionalities, technicalities, you know, the benefits, and how it drives energy access uh, uh, globally. So once again, thank you so much. Uh, we're excited to have you on, and we want to, of course, share with you what this experience of uh, Open Pay Go Pass is, and and how uh, you can use it uh, for your Pay as you go product and services, um, in, especially in regions where uh, mobile money uh, is inaccessible. You won't hear from me. Um, I have my colleagues who will be here, who will be sharing and talking more um, uh, into this conversation and this topic, and I'll be bringing them right on stage. I want to thank everybody for joining. If you can hear me, maybe you want to put a chat, introduce yourself in the chat box, and let us know where you are you're watching from, uh, your name, your location, if you want to put it in the chat box so we'll know where you're chatting from and, and, and this will help us to know our audience much more better. So introduce yourself in the chat box and just let us know where you're watching this from. All right. Yes, Argentina. Oh, wow. That's good. We want to see more people do that. Uh, your name, your location, where you're chatting from. Uh, you're watching from, if you want to add your organization and what you do, the chat, chat box is usually the best place to, I mean, you'll connect to a few new people, uh, make some new connections, which will be very helpful to you also. All right, thank you so much. Um, I would like to bring in our, our speakers upstage in a minute. Of course, you'll be hearing from them and I mean, they know the technical know-how of this and how it works and how you can get started with it. So I'd like to start real quick. Uh, first, I would like to welcome, and before I do that, let me just say again, that this webinar has been put together by NSS and um, Solaris of Grid, which of course we've worked together to put together this uh, open Pago pass. So just in case. All right, the chat box is, is, is buzzing. Philippines, Argentina, Nigeria. Um, wow. Okay, interesting. We'll get right into the conversation and I would like to invite our speakers upstage. Uh, first is uh, Vivian Barnia, who is the CEO of NSS. Uh, Vivian, you want to come upstage? Yes. Also joining for the conversation is uh, Benjamin David, who is the CTO of Solaris Upgrid, Chief Technology Officer. And beautiful. And then one more speaker who, of course, will be coming on as the conversation goes on is, is Daniel. Daniel is soft is a software engineer at NSS. All right, Daniel is here. Okay, the team is here already. And uh, if you can hear me, we have different people joining us from different locations. So we can call this a global conversation we're having here, of course, as we try to have that to how it drives energy access. All right, so first of all, I would like to invite B. Vivian to give us a brief introduction about NSS and what we do. And then Benjamin will also give us a little bit intro about Solaris Upgrade. And then before we get into the conversation, Vivian, over to you. Thank you, Wisdom. And uh, once again, uh, welcome to all our attendees. And uh, thank you also from my side that you make time to check in from all these different places of the world and different time zones and even being on InterSolar as far as I've seen for some. Um, that's great. We will have a short intro about once an access and Solaris 
And later we, right after we dive really deep into the Pago Pass and Pago ecosystem in general, and we'll later also have time for the Q&A. For the Q&A, please drop your questions in the chat, as already said, and we will try to answer them as many as we can by the end um, of this webinar. So let me drive very quickly and what an access does. Uh, I believe a few of you know already, others likely not. So a uh, very quick intro on an access. Why do we do open innovation? Um, to achieve SDG 7, so universal, affordable, and reliable energy access for all, we require a lot of innovations. And these innovations are being developed by different energy access organizations, mostly private companies, very small ones, mid-sized ones, large ones, and all are in the drive to achieve SDG 7 um, as quick as we can. However, in this, as quick as we can, we often, and I speak out of experience, I've been a practitioner in the sector as well, we narrow down our, our vision and that try to solve the problems that we face, but we've solved them for our own and are not looking around and are not able and do not have the time or not think about sharing as part of what we develop. And often not because we're so scared about being that the business intelligence or the main, main purpose uh, or the main thing to protect to set us off of the others often it's just the baseline infrastructure that we really need to do what we actually want to do which is electrify people with standalone solar systems mini grids or whatsoever and these can be communication protocols these can be pay as you go technology which is a required mean to actually let electrify electrify people and we believe instead of reinventing the wheel, redeveloping this infrastructure again and again in different settings by different organizations, we should join forces on this main common infrastructure. And then everyone can still build their own business model on top of it uh, by customizing and using the open source infrastructure to build their own commercialized closed source parts to it. And so how do we do it at Annexus? We support, we curate, and we promote open source. Support means we identify missing pieces and building blocks and tools for the sector and help the creation of those. These can be by providing RT funding, as in this case, or also by in house contributions to projects to develop them. And secondly, the curation we maintain a repository of selected high quality open source tools that can be leveraged by energy access organizations in the sector. And these are tools that have been developed in collaboration with Annexus, but also other open source tools which exist in the sector that have been possibly developed completely independent from Annexus, but which are still open source, which we believe are relevant for the sector. And lastly, promote. We promote open source tools, the relevant and high quality open source tools that we see that are there and that companies can use, and also advocate for open source collaboration and knowledge sharing within the sector. And organize events like this one, for example, to promote the Pago Pass, but also the open source approach in general. And for example, another example, a recent event we had is the Open Source and Energy Access Symposium in Abuja, where we brought together stakeholders, local companies, international companies, academia, policymakers uh, to talk in, about open source in energy access and actually create a collaboration roadmap and how can we have this momentum and use open source more broadly together. And we were actually also able to pull in the open source community Africa, which is pretty active in Nigeria, which is completely detached to energy access, but is now contributing to a couple of projects we have. Uh, with that, I would like to hand over to Ben to give a few words on Solaris before we dive into the Pago Pass. Thanks, Vivian, and uh, thanks everybody for for joining. Um, so, just to present quickly what uh, Solar Grid is. Uh, so, Solar Grid is composed of uh, well, uh, two main uh, two main parts. One part is uh, PegOps, which is the flagship product of Solar Grid, which is a tool that allows a last mile organization to digitize their operations and to become uh, uh, efficient in the field basically efficient in the last mile and that is obviously for paygo uh, organizations so 
organizations that are doing distribution of uh, vegetable soda kits, but also organizations that are doing uh, microfinance, agriculture, uh, cook stove, or health. So a variety of different uh, essential services distributed at the, the last night. And we have a sort of the other branch, the Solaris Lab, which is focused on, um, on designing innovation that are more related to the hardware side, that are enablers for uh, those companies to be able to, to scale efficiently as well. And as part of that, uh, Solaris has really developed the Open Pico Suite, which uh, we will talk a little bit more about uh, here soon. So yeah, I think maybe we can jump yeah, into that. Great. Yeah, great. Uh, thank you, uh, Ben. And uh, I know, hope now everybody knows who is talking here and uh, why we are together on that. And But now we want to jump into what is the main topic uh, of this webinar, is the introduction into the Open Pago Pass. But before jumping right into the pass itself, we want to take a step back and understand a bit, I, get, I assume from the audience here, a lot are familiar with uh, the Pago ecosystem. And there's actually also a question, a poll question, which you can answer to assess a bit how many of you um, have already interacted with the Open Pago token or not. But the Pago ecosystem is large and has a lot of challenges, uh, has also solutions and has, has been developed initially as a solution to challenges, um, but still uh, we can improve it. And I, I would love you, Ben, maybe to give us a bit of an overview from your perspective, who's, I would say, like in a positive way, a dinosaur of the Pago ecosystem. So you, you know a lot of it, you know how it's been evolved, you likely know a lot uh, what is working well and what are still hindrances and things we can improve so if you could give us a like status uh state of the art of the ecosystem of pago and also during that like transitioning to to why came how you came up with the idea of the open pago pass sure um so yeah maybe to, to get started from, from the start, so like a little bit of, a, of history on the Open Pago project in general. Uh, so the Open Pago project in general, it started uh, about five, uh, five and a half years ago, uh, initially with Open Pago token. And the, the reasoning behind Open Pago token is actually very similar to reasoning for the following technologies, which is that we realized uh, as a software provider providing software for companies doing uh, distributing passable products, we realized that uh, each of the software providers that existed, so us, uh, other software provider, and sometimes manufacturers as well, were all are reinventing the same piece of technology over and over again, uh, each time slightly different, meaning they weren't really compatible. And uh, each time as well, spending time and, and money on that. Um, so basically, we had a situation where we were trying to get on board with a new distributor in a new country, and we had to integrate with uh, their ma new manufacturer, which uh, would take time, it would delay projects, and every time it would have a lot of costs on all of the side. It would have cost on the side of the manufacturer who had to invent their own pay mechanism. It would have cost on our side uh, having to integrate with that new pay mechanism. It would have cost on the side of the distributors that had to wait for that integration to take place and for all the, the issues that it would, uh, that it would put. Um, in general, that kind of status quo in the, in the Pego ecosystem at that point had a lot of uh, inconvenience. Uh, basically, it was impossible for distributors to change software providers. Uh, it was very hard to uh, get support, and often the Pego mechanism was created a lot uh, individually by each of the manufacturers since they had to do it quite quickly. Often we're lacking uh, essential features. So a lot of them you could add days to device but you couldn't remove, or sometimes they were impractical, you had to enter tokens that were 20 digits long or things like that. And so working in that ecosystem and seeing those, uh, those issues and seeing everybody trying to reinvent the wheel uh, every other month, basically, we decided that um, 
it would be good to basically provide a quality alternative that everybody could use uh, for free and open source. And that's when we came up with the Open Pico token project uh, that NXS helped fund uh, five years ago. And which was basically a pay as you go token mechanism that was uh, implemented all the essential feature, was designed, engineered to be practical to use, taking into account like feedback from the different stakeholders. But more importantly, was completely free to use, no licensing fee, uh, no anything for both sides, for both for manufacturers and for other software providers. So even for competitors, it was totally free to use and fully open source. And uh, it worked quite well with uh, now in the industry, like all the major Pego software providers are using Open Pego token. We have more than 40 manufacturers that adopted it. And so kind of riding that wave, it took a bit of time to get to that point after developing new technology. But after we saw like the, the benefits and kind of riding that wave of seeing that we could make uh, open source solution work and being adopted widely by the industry. Uh, three years ago, we launched the Open Table Metrics, which is a standardized protocol for sending the usage metrics in a compact way. So it's the same idea that when a manufacturer develops a device with um, a GSM modem that wants to transmit data to, a, to the Bazigo software, they don't have to reinvent the wheel and integrate with each other software provider separately. They just have this one open source format that is very compact, that uh, can send a lot of data in very little space to avoid having to pay high network fees. And, uh, and so we release that to, to the public. And so that kind of brings us to to nowadays, we're building on those technology of the, the token and the metrics. Uh, we launch, we're launching the, the open paper pass. Thank you, uh, Ben. I think that's great. And I think it's great to have this background also for, for everybody a bit to see uh, what Pago generally is and uh, to, with where the Pago has can, yeah, can play a role and where it's fitting in within this, this ecosystem. Um, so I think what would be interesting to understand now from a like problem solution perspective, what, what additional key features does the open Pago pass now add to the conventional Pago ecosystem or the way how Pago is working? What and which one does it change it with the additional features that you're adding with the Pago pass? Uh, sure. So the open Pago pass is different in, um, in two main ways. One of them is that it works uh, in areas where there is no uh, GSM coverage or no mobile money coverage, which was like really the, the key driver for, for that project, while still allowing to provide data feedback. Uh, so that if you compare that to the, the Open Pego metrics that I mentioned uh, earlier, the Open Pego metrics, it requires network coverage. And the Open Pego token, it usually also requires network coverage to be able to receive the, the SMS as well as the mobile money. Uh, the other key differentiator is that it's much cheaper uh, than the, the GSM solution. And it's also compared to the token-based method, uh, when you want to use the token-based method without GSM, it's much simpler to use. You don't even need to know how to use it. Okay, thank you. Um, so, I mean, that, that was a very clear and concise uh, uh, answer. Um, now, for the last my distributor itself, how does it, um, wh which benefits does it bring in terms of, of data collection and like being able to monitor the system? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. So the, main, the big benefits it brings, the first one I would say for, for us, at least the one that was the most important uh, was the ability to reach clients that were not previously reachable. Uh, so those are the clients that are in areas where there is no GSM coverage, uh, clients that uh, are in areas where there is no mobile money, and clients that were previously not reachable, not necessarily because it was absolutely impossible, but because it was so complicated uh, to reach those clients that it wouldn't have been economically viable. 
Whereas with the open pickle pass, with the efficiencies that you gain, uh, you are able to reach those clients that are really at the last mile that are often the most underserved clients. Uh, that's one of the, the big benefits and the one that was central. The second one is that it allows you to get result-based financing uh, that is reliant on data while adding very, very little cost in the end to the, to the device. Uh, so if you compare that to like a GSM device, so quite often for result-based financing programs where you get paid for installing by the government or other organization, you get paid for uh, installing, like providing energy access to the joint client. Uh, for, for those methods, traditionally, you needed to have a, a GSM modem, pay a GSM subscription for the device to collect the data that was allowing you to get that result-based financing. With Open Pago Pass, you're able to get that result based financing because you're able to get that data, but you're able to do that at a fraction of the price, less than five or ten percent of the price of the alternative solution of doing it with, with JSON. And the last big benefit is it allows you to get good data uh, about your, your least um, reachable customers. So usually you already have some data about your customers that have larger systems with TVs that are like easier to go visit quite often, that are also quite often have products that might have GSM in them. So you have a good knowledge of those customers, but you have much less knowledge of your customers that are really uh, the hardest to reach that are in areas with no network coverage. You cannot call them to do uh, surveys. It's hard to reach them. With that technology, you now are getting able to to get an insight into their daily lives, to get insight into their energy use, uh, and so to get to know them better, to be able to tailor your services and provide higher quality service to, to those clients. Okay, uh, great. And I mean, yeah, thank you for, for clarifying that to our audience and also to me again. I, I know when you approached us, we liked the project, even though it took time for us to decide for it. Um, but yeah, we were always, amazed by this particular bi-directional information flow now compared with the I mean you're, you're comparing it currently a lot with the GSM in terms of cost because GSM can do that obviously when there's connectivity that's the, the one condition obviously uh, but at a, at a price tag which right, particularly for the smaller systems like doubles the price of the system possibly, or at least as a significant fraction of the system itself. Mm -hmm. So not really justifiable just to like uh, be able to monitor an RBF. And uh, now this, we have to say it's it's not a real time communication, right? Because it only yeah. swaps the information one every time the RFID tag uh, has contact with the device, right? Exactly. So the information is transmitted whenever the client is actually making a payment which for most of the companies we we know is either weekly or monthly, uh, which actually quite often aligns with the RBF requirement, like the result-based financing usually asks you to provide data every month or something like that. They don't ask you to provide like real-time data. Yeah, which also is, I mean, for a solar home system, I mean, my personal opinion doesn't make much sense. I mean, what do you want to know about? And I mean, it also brings data security questions and so on, which are much easier in that case here um so uh, but I, I i think you mentioned it but just maybe I, I missed it um but to highlight it again the the cost compared to the common so from the functionality it's pretty close to a gsm enabled mm -hmm. solar home system in terms of communicating data with the limitations not real time but yeah it's possibly something that is not necessarily required in most of the cases but compared to price tech with the at the RFID solution with the OpenPago Pass, with the conventional keypad, which doesn't have any bi-directional communication. But how close are they to each other? Um, In terms of cost, uh, yeah. they're very similar. So the, the RFID module, so just to give like an order of magnitude of the, the numbers we're talking with, um, the OpenPago Pass requires an RFID module and antenna that will cost between a dollar, dollar fifty to integrate into the, the device, uh, accounting for like the, the PCB real estate that you need and the integrated circuit that does the RFID itself. So yeah, around a dollar, dollar fifty, and obviously you don't have uh, any branding costs, you don't have to pay 
um, any data package or anything like that because it relies on the data of the agent's uh, phones or neighbor's phone. So that's for the, the open Pago pass cost, like hardware cost. Uh, on the token side, actually the keypad um, has a very similar uh, price point. So a membrane keypad with like the numbers and everything will cost anywhere between like 50 cents and a dollar 50. So a little bit cheaper, but uh, still in the very cheap side of thing. When you compare that to uh, the, the fully fledged solution, like the GSM solution that has the two-way communication, uh, contrary to the keypad and the GSM solution, usually uh, you would pay somewhere between five and ten dollars for the modem, and an additional uh, around ten dollars a year in uh, subscription fee, like seven, eight dollars a year in subscription fee. So we're talking overalls around somewhere around fifteen twenty dollars for a GSM solution. I'm assuming the device is paid in a year, which is about ten times more as the Open Pickle Pass solution. And is often very significant because those those fifteen dollars aren't uh, fifteen dollars of like final price customers. They're fifteen dollars in in hardware cost, which is quite often very close to the cost of all the rest of the devices. Like those small uh, five watt, ten watt solar kits, like the total uh, bill of material is usually in the fifteen to twenty dollar range. So adding this extra cost of the monitoring really doesn't make sense. It doubles the price of the of the device. Cool. Thank you. I, I think now we have talked a lot about the general functionality, pricing, and, and how it solves problems for the distributors, eases the access for the clients. Um, and I, I would now like to jump a bit more in the open source aspect of it, in the more technical aspect. And for that, would like to invite uh, Daniel, um, our senior software engineer from Nexus, on the stage to like discuss a bit more this aspect of the project um, uh, with you. So Daniel, please welcome. I, I will leave you too and uh, come back later for wrapping up uh, and the Q&A. So Daniel, please come on stage. Yeah, hello from me, I'm Daniel. <clears throat> nice to see everyone joining in from all over the world. Yeah, as you mentioned, so we, I want to cover a little bit the open source aspect of, um, of the whole project or, uh, yeah, in general. So just a recap, as was mentioned in the introduction quickly, like as an access, like we really believe that open source is a key, um, can play a key role in energy access as a sector. And it's really like projects like this that confirms our disbelief for us. Like if you think about this, what Ben already shared, everything started with the open Keiko token and Nexus was involved in the initial funding of that a little bit. We tried to help out, but it's not only that, it's really growing that and there's many, many components. And today we are only covering one of the components that get added to the ecosystem, but you can really tell how growing such an ecosystem is something that may not have been possible if it wasn't for an open source part of that. Um, one thing, like in earlier conversations, you guys touched a little bit on like what can open source do for a project. You mentioned like a repetition of work that was very, very tedious, like a waste of resources and just time making things more efficient. You mentioned customizability. This is also very relevant. People can come and really take the solution at someone else's work and customize that to, to their use case. But there's another um, component of open source that I personally, but we as an organization as well, think is really, really important is the community aspect. And like, we are working on this together. So yes, there's some persons who take maybe a little bit of a lead role in giving the direction, but really it's about the community. And community has two aspects. It's like people that adopt the project and users that benefit from it, but also people that want to contribute to it, right? Be it um, with questions, with ideas, be it code contributions. All this is very, very uh, important and crucial. So for the Open Paygo suite in general, there's actually some really nice recent uh, additions where um, it was mentioned in the beginning, we had the Open Source and Energy Access Symposium in Abuja earlier uh, this year. And we, there were some people really interested that had no contact point with Energy Access, 
energy access to contributors. We had technical writers reviewing our documentation. We had code contribution in programming languages that we didn't support so far. So you can really see this open source ecosystem being able to uh, bring a project like this forward. So with this being said, man, um, could you maybe just, yeah, just reiterate and use your own words, like what for you, for Solaris, what was the reasons for you to put open Pego Suite, the open pass under an open source license? Uh, sure. So yeah, I, I think I mentioned it a little bit uh, at the beginning, the, the reason we did that is basically because we were thinking it's the only way it can work. Like if we develop our own, uh, our own suite of Pego technology, we keep them proprietary for our, uh, our clients, uh, for the manufacturers we work with. We're still going to have to integrate with other manufacturers. Uh, those manufacturers will still have to integrate with other software providers. And in the end, uh, we're still going to have issues with, uh, with the end clients and with the, the distributors that are kind of locked in and really don't, don't have any freedom to move around, to pick and choose from different suppliers and to change software providers. So for us, it was either doing it open source or, or not doing it at all, because it's the only way we saw it as, a, as a, a way that could fully work, as well because we believe kind of in the, in the innovation aspect of the community, that people would have ideas, would improve on it. And it did turn out quite well. We often get like uh, issues on the GitHub. We get some ideas from people in the community, some, uh, some small improvements and things like that that are keeping the project alive and, and making it improve uh, through time. Okay, nice. Um, that makes a lot of sense. Um, can you explain us a little bit like how the open Pago pass integrates into an existing open Pago suite solution? Like if someone's already using, adopting the open Pago suite, like how does it uh, integrate into that as a technology? Sure, yeah, great question. It, it was actually designed from the beginning to build on top of the existing technologies. So Open Pago Pass itself actually requires uh, Open Pago metrics to work and Open Pago token. So it's really um, like each of the technologies are building on top of each other. Metrics was building on top of token, and Pass is building on top of both of them, uh, which presents this very uh, very interesting uh, consequence of that is that if you're a software provider and you already implemented Open Pago token, Open Pago metrics into your, your system, uh, potentially using the, the open source Python libraries that we have, then your software is already compatible uh, with Open Pago Pass. You don't need to do anything. If you have uh, clients that are using uh, devices that are Open Pago Pass compatible, it will work out of the box. And that's because it's really built on top, meaning uh, the data that actually is transmitted inside of the pass is uh, an open Pego metrics payload that contains an open Pego token for the activation and the data in open Pego metrics format. And, and that really makes it a lot easier in general for adoption and it integrates really well into the rest of the suite. And that's like the general philosophy for the, for the suite. Like it will be the same when we have like open Pego bridge in the future or a bridge. Like the idea is to keep everything uh, really built on top of each other and really compatible so that as uh, as a software provider or as a manufacturer, you have really minimal work uh, to do for the integration. Yeah, that, that's amazing. And I think that's also something when we were working on this project, Open Pago Pass, that we really like developed, like saying, hey, we want this to be very, very easy to adopt. Like you were in the driving seat there for most of the time, like really making sure uh, like the adoption is very, very simple if you are already committed to the open Pago ecosystem. And um, that's great. Um, one last uh, question for me, just to make things a bit more visible in this, in this webinar, I, I pulled out some very random pictures of like from the development, some devices so we can see something. Um, those are also things that we maybe see on, uh, I think on the GitHub or in the blog post. Could you just quickly uh, walk us through what we are seeing here. What are the hardware components involved in a in a pass uh, in a project adopting the open paper path? Sure. Uh, nice pictures. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think we'll start from the from the most essential uh, bit, which is what we can see the yellow keychain here, which is the the pass itself. 
And that's actually just a, an RFID tag uh, that you can find from any suppliers. They're like really easy to really easy to find. They cost is anywhere between one or two cents to uh, maybe 10, 20 cents for the, the fancier one. You can get them like customized with your company logo on it. And we can also use cards if you prefer, but that's like the pass itself. And that's the part of the system that uh, will contain the data that is exchanged between the, the device and uh, the backend system. Um, behind that, you can actually see a phone and it's just any regular uh, Android phone that has NFC compatibility with the Open Pego Pass app installed, um, installed on it. And um, what's interesting there is that you, you can really use any phone that supports NFC which uh, is many, many phones nowadays, even phones that are like 10, 10 years old, and uh, it, will, it will work. Um, you just need to download the app and, and it will work. And, uh, and on that aspect, actually, so on the app, it doesn't even need to be uh, an app that is with an, with an agent. Uh, it can be an app that is with your neighbors. Like the app itself is open source, it's on the App Store, and you just need to uh, select the app, you select your provider, you tap the, the, the pass itself, and it will work. Um, so just to, to go for the, the full flow uh, of what it looks like as a user. So as a user, you get your device uh, with this little pass that is given to you with your device. So you can then give a second pass just in case one gets lost. And so as a user, what you do is you tap your pass onto your device. And then you can go to your nearest agent uh, and give them the pass itself and the money to pay for your activation. And it will take the money, go into their Pego software, register that you paid, and then just tap the, the pass onto their phone. And you just walk back home with the pass, tap it on your device, and it will work. Like your device will be activated. You don't need to read. You don't need to copy anything. Uh, right down on token, none of that. It's just tapping the pass on the phone, tapping the pass on the device at home, and that's it. And uh, the good thing with it being uh, open source, with having the app fully available, is it doesn't actually require to have a hierarchical structure where it's necessarily with an agent. So if your neighbor, uh, if you don't have mobile money, but maybe your neighbor in like the next village has mobile money and has a smartphone, you can also ask your neighbor to pay with the mobile money and then ask the neighbor to tap uh, to tap the pass on their phone, and that will activate your device as well. So that allows for a more decentralized model while still being very simple to do. So that's the perspective from the, the end user side. And just quickly, the perspective from the, the manufacturer side where you're integrating is like what we see in the, the picture on the right, is um, what you need to add to your device is basically just the RFID uh, reader and antenna, which is kind of like the red bit that we see. Uh, those can be found like off the shelf really easily, or you can integrate them into your into your PCB directly. And uh, what is actually represented on the right is also the Open Pego hardware development kit. So we provide a full full development kit with all the firmware, with uh, very standard components that are easy to find. You can just go on Amazon. You can get those components for a couple of euros um, and you can then reproduce and recreate at home the um, open Pego pass device uh, very very easily and to integrate it to your product it's also very easy it's just using the libraries putting the code into your device and you are basically up and running just customizing it for the metrics that you want and and that's it all right thank you yeah like uh if there's other people who are like visual as me, like seeing this really, really helps to get an idea. Oh, you're like, this is really how the components look like. Like, this is really what I can do. Um, thanks a lot. I think that's small, for the most part the questions I wanted to ask. Um, handing it over to Vivian again to talk a little bit on about where we are going. Yeah, thank you uh, to the two of you to the, the more uh, open source concentrated and the tech discussion. And uh, also, yeah, good to see how it actually looks like and um, to, to see how easy it's to use with just a, like, the little PCB in your device and then the phone and this little 
yellow or whatever color you want to have it uh, RFID uh, uh, tag in the end. Um, uh, very great. I, I also see we have the first questions coming in the chat. I just want to remind the audience uh, the chat is there for you to put the questions while well, I have another one for Ben before we start with the Q&A, but uh, just a little reminder, we uh, yeah, we will try to address your questions once we arrive at the Q&A, which is like in a minute or two or three, depending on how much we take. Um, the, the one question that's it's a further I mean, a general question a bit to, to you, Ben, on, on the Pago Pass. Do you have already any future plans? I mean, now it has been developed uh, and finalized a couple of months back. And so it's released. Um, so do you have already any like follow-ups in mind and things that you say, ah, oh, we want to possibly improve in the future? Uh, yeah, any any future plans around Pago Pass and maybe about the open Pago ecosystem in general uh, that uh, you have in pipeline uh, or in mind already? So happy to hear that before we jump to the Q and A with the questions from the audience. Sure. Um, so in terms of like where we where we're looking uh, at that, as you said, like the Open Pago Pass project was released just a couple of months ago. We received uh, informally some people that are interested, but um, it, it's going to be a slow uh, uptake uh, in general because. What is really driving the adoption is the amount of uh, hardware of manufacturers adopting the, the technology. And the cycles for the adoption, the hardware cycles are, are usually kind of, so we're talking 12, 18 months to get a new device. And so it needs as well to align on when this technology came out. So we, we just have for now a few people that are interested in formulas that contacted us to try and get more and more details. Uh, but obviously since it only came Came out a few months ago. We don't have any uh, any manufacturers that really have the technology fully uh, integrated into uh, production devices. Uh, but here I'm calling to everybody that's out there today. Like, if you're interested, uh, please let us know. Uh, and in particular, because in terms of the, the future plans, one thing we want to do for now for pass before we start uh, improving it is listen. We want to really know, get feedback from the manufacturers. Uh, on how is it for them to integrate about uh, their feedback on the, the functionality that are, that are required. Um, really try to listen and to see what, what we can uh, improve on that side. And in terms of the plan about the Open Pego Street in general, uh, I think I mentioned we have the Open Pego uh, Bridge and Air Bridge, which are uh, again based on the Open Pego metrics uh, and open Pego token. So on the software side, if you're already integrated, nothing to do. And they basically allow the data to be transmitted as well uh, without GSM, but in another way, it's more for uh, people with a smartphone. So to allow when you sell together a device with a smartphone, be able to just uh, while the smartphone charges with USB, transmit the, the data. But that's something that is more for, for next year. Just to give a little bit of vision. For now, really to focus on the past, as I said, would be to really start and hear feedback uh, from the manufacturers as they as in Cool, uh, exciting. And yeah, yeah I, uh, I agree that uh, the contact with the manufacturers, the with manufacturers, not, not always um, the easiest and uh, it's a task to address. But uh, yeah, happy to, to see that in your pipeline. Um, Thank you so much, Ben, for all the insights that you have shared. Um, actually, very insightful for me as well, even though uh, we have been with this project from, from the beginning. We have helped it to, to, to be funded and implemented by you guys. But yeah, there are always uh, details here and there that you, that you learn. Um, now we are at the Q&A, and I see that we have a couple of questions in the chat. Um, of which I believe you have kind of answered the first one, but I, I will just uh, read it out once again. It's from Michel Pipat, I guess, uh, from Solali, who is mentioning that because we have also worked uh, with Solali in the past, actually also Pago related and the open smart meter related. It was uh, like on the open hardware side. Um, 
it was mainly a learning project let's say we, we tried an integration that did not work out as expected but it's part of it and it's, as it's open source we shared our learnings and so on to avoid other to make the same mistakes or like taking another venue so um open source is not always only everything works out but it's about sharing experience and also bad experience not only the good ones and to yeah to be more efficient jointly um so this is um yeah this is where we have collaborated together and the question is can you share some concrete projects or manufacturer thinking of using this technology in the near future i mean you answered this question generally but maybe you, i don't know how much you can say names or yeah. not but yeah maybe you can certainly no i don't think i give no names uh, right now because like there is nothing that is uh, very concrete as far as i know so it's just for now like prototypes and exploratory uh, exploratory phase um but if you're interested to uh, to get that technology into manufacturers, uh, please also you can get in touch with manufacturers, and we we can also be there to help them uh, help them support them into the in the integration. The project in the end came for more from the pool from uh, from the market, and it's true that we need now to get manufacturers on board. And I've been clients that ask their manufacturers, "Hey, it would be interesting to have that technology is really uh, one way to to go, especially when they know that it's very cheap for them to integrate." Yeah, good, great. Um, next question from Jerome. Uh, is it possible to license the RFID solution so we could integrate the path into our customer card, which has other functions, including the RFID functionality? I'm not exactly certain what you mean by license. You, you also not, I mean, you mean, I mean, it's difficult as you can't. Um, <laughs> Uh, you can't answer, no, you can answer in the chat. I don't know, Ben, do you, are you do you have an interpretation of the question? Mm, no, I'm not sure I understand. I mean, if it's licensing open Pego Pass, uh, there is no need to license it uh, uh, as it's open source and it's available with the, the MIT license, but uh, so you can use it freely today if you want. Uh, but I'm, I'm not entirely sure, especially about the second part of the question, of, adding it into a customer card. Um, yeah, we maybe invite you, Jerome, to provide clarification in the chat um, if, if you think we haven't understood your question well. Yeah, on licensing, it's an MIT license, so you can obviously tweak it and, and make adoption, uh, like adaptions and license dues in a closed source way. That's what the MIT license allows you to do. Um, but yeah, what is open source is open source. So, I mean, the, the part that has been developed this MIT will stay open source and I mean we obviously invite to make contributions open source as well even though the MIT license allows you to like do otherwise <laughs> to add not open source parts to it uh, for yourself but yeah um let's move on uh Joseph what would be the best way to contact an access for further support not specifically for open pay or pass but an access funded solutions in general I guess this is a question to myself and um, you we have on our website a help desk which you can reach via it's a type form basically you fill it out like two or three questions asking which uh, project are you looking for support and then we will get in touch with you you can also reach out via info at an access.org directly if you want to reach us to, to get support on, on the adoption um, on, on any of our projects. Um, we will also be posting the link to the adoption support uh, yeah, form directly. Now, Akim from Coolbox, who we met recently at our symposium in Nigeria. So glad you, you are here also in, in the webinar. So the question is a rather long one, but I will still read it out. Uh, let's say you want to take the GSM communication route and you've already communicated to the open Pago ecosystem. Which one will be the more easier to manage and flexible with Pago CRM integration between adopting open Pago suite and having the open Pago firmware on a board that can connect to the internet than having to manage the database and the data stream? 
So it's a very tech question to you, Ben, which I'm not sure you directly understand it. I don't. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure I understand. If I understand correctly, I think you're asking what's the, the easiest way to get the, the connection to the internet, basically. And I guess which one of the open Pego suite, like if you're already committed to open Pego, which one of the Pego suite technology you have to use for that. And, and there the recommendation is, uh, is for the, the open Pego technology for, for that JSON communication is the open Pego metrics. And the easiest way to integrate would probably to have a look at the open Pego uh, HDK hardware development kit that was uh, also like recently revamped and remade and published in a, in a new repo with a lot of increment as part of the open Pego past project. So you can start from that um, open Pego hardware development kit and then just slightly adapt it to uh, the GSM modem that you're using. But the, the hardware development kit already has in the firmware the whole open Pego metric support. So it's really just about adding your, your GSM modem to the, to the mix. Uh, be the easiest way. Okay, I I hope this was clear to you, Akim. Otherwise, I bet you know how to find uh, Solaris to ask them. But otherwise, I'm happy happy to help with that. Um, the next question, I think that's a clarification from Jerome on the initial question. Uh, the pass has a tech details which would allow us to clone and add it to our customer cards so they do not have to keep two pieces of plastic. So in the end, the idea is, as far as I understand, you already have a card that also has RFID and you would like to integrate, instead of having the, the own RFID pack integrated with with the Payable Pass pack, if this is possible. I, I understand the question that way. I don't know, Ben, yeah. maybe you no. to answer to that. I understand the, the same thing, and uh, the answer would be, I think, a little bit in the details. So it depends how your RFID card is working. So we can have like different pages. Uh, you might be able to set it up so that you have like the, the first page with the open Pego Pass and the um, and open Pego Pass data, and then you have like another page that is specific for your use case. But this will really depend on what your use case is and how much control you have over it. So if it's like a card that you're using with your own mobile app or with your own uh, device, I think you might be able to make it work. If it's something that is already commercial, like it's a credit card or something like that, uh, it's going to be very difficult. Uh, but yeah, the format in general of the, the pass is, uh, is, uh, is fully available, fully open source, uh, and you can turn any RFID card uh, that you find, like you can buy a pack of a 10 RFID card on AliExpress, and basically, any of them, you can turn them into Open Pico Pass uh, just with flashing them. You can do that directly from the Open Pico mobile app. There is an option in the menu to turn any uh, standard RFID card as be formatted as an Open Pico Pass that you can then use with the device. Okay, thank you, Ben. Um, I hope this was helpful for you, Jerome. Um, I, I would have one more question as I, it seems we have one or two minutes uh, before wrapping up and I don't see any other question from the audience right now, but I have one. Um, in terms of uh, data security and like customer data protection, how, I mean, how would you evaluate that for, for the Opego Pass technology which consideration have you taken yourself within like setup of the technology, which ones somebody who implements it should mm -hmm. think about um, in terms of, yeah, uh, respecting the data, possibly private data or any data security issues that might arise from using it. Sure. Uh, so inside the device itself, we have like some, uh, the possibility to enable encryption mechanism as well as by default you have the signature of the data to ensure that the data is, uh, is always like kept intact. Um, in general, we also don't necessarily recommend putting uh, customer data that is sensitive uh, on the, the pass itself. So usually what you would do is you would have uh, just your, your serial number of the device that then only the backend software would know actually who it belongs to. 
uh, that's one point. And then as someone who implements the technology in, in general, just really make sure that the communication um, with your server is secured. And actually by default, the Open Pickle Pass app will refuse to work with servers that uh, are software providers that don't use a secure connection, don't use HTTPS, so it's really like one of the key requirements. Um, the, the, the main thing to then take into account uh, is as a software provider, how safely you keep your, your data. That I think is a, is a whole other side of things. Okay, okay, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, thank, thank you for this detailed answer. Um, I will wait another 10 or 15 seconds. If there's any other question from the audience, it's your chance right now. Type it very quickly in the chat. Otherwise, ha, there is a question. Um, you are lucky. So how this is YouTube can't hear. I, I hope I pronounced it well. I'm sorry if not. How can I get fund for my organization of Africa Child Foundation Mission of Tanzania? Uh, I guess that's a question possibly to us and access. Um, you would have to check our funding on our get support part uh, on annexus.com, uh, .org, sorry, annexus.org, um, to see if a project that you have under development is fitting our funding requirements, um, saying that we currently do fund to a very limited extent and very specifically open source R&D research and development projects in energy access so the project must be a research and development project which is committed to have all the results open source and must be relevant to the energy access sector uh, this can be software hardware a combination of those as it's in this case for example um, but yeah that's the the answer to the question i hope this uh, helped you now i would move to closing this uh, session uh, which was super insightful for myself i hope uh, for you the audience as well the question was already raised um, how can i get help if i want to adopt the pago pass for example but this actually applies uh, to any other of the projects that, that we are creating and maintaining in our repository on mnx.org uh, you can reach out on info at access.org or you go via our adoption su support uh, help desk, which you will find uh, on our homepage. Um, if you need then specific, very specific support um, on the Pago Pass, which we are not able to, to provide, you might need to reach out to Solaris. And that, I mean, they, they, that's their job and their business <laughs> to work with their products. Um, and possibly do customization or help you with integration. Um, there might be some commercial discussions around that, but yeah, that's, uh, this is the other venue to go about the, the ones that have been developed by Solaris. For us, it's for the general support, you can reach out to us. Um, that said, I don't know, Ben, do you want to have any final closing words from your side? Uh, no, not in particular. Just thank you everybody for, for coming and uh, and I hope that uh, if if any of you is interested in, in adopting this technology, uh, like, uh, that would be a great outcome for that webinar. Yeah. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Wisdom. Thank you, Jambalet. Thank you, Daniel. Um, and thank you all of you in the audience for participating, for engaging with questions, uh, for making time, even though you're on conferences or in time zones where it's definitely not regular working hours right now. Uh, much appreciated. It was great having you here. This session has been recorded. Um, so we will also make the recording available and possibly also provide some best offs um, if you want to, to rewatch uh, part of it, which Sometimes in a webinar, it's a lot of information in a short time can happen. Uh, so stay tuned and have a good morning, day, afternoon, night, as uh, we have so many times here present. So have a good one. Bye bye.